that I'd like to know how, uh, in the sense that the larger uh, United States is sort of feeling that there is a growing sense of vigilance by the government on their private lives. So how do these latest developments tie into the growing, you know, big brother sense of the United States government? Well, I think physically, I mean, we're, we're now walking around a society where there are cameras everywhere, some of them governmental, some of them non-governmental, but easily accessed by the government whenever they, whenever they, they deem it appropriate. Um, so we, we actually have physical more surveillance, but I think you know the, uh, the upshot of, of things like the Patriot Act and, and other anti-terrorist measures have been to allow the government to have greater surveillance through access to your phone lines, access to your emails, access to all, all forms of communication, as well as uh, actual physical surveillance and following people. I mean, we were talking a little bit before the taping of the program about the MTAs, if you see something, uh, say something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of this mentality that is now out there where everyone is sort of being deputized to become an agent of government law enforcement uh, and to use that as, as, a, as a form of getting information and gathering intelligence, which is then used by the uh, police departments and law enforcement in, in an incredible number of, of, of uh, very uh, uh, invidious ways. Okay. Well, uh, as if I just may add real quick, um, I think one important thing that we need to do is to bring that sort of question into context within the Puerto Rican and Latino community. Uh, Mr. Soto had mentioned earlier that the government may be in the process of shaking the tree. I wrote an article actually titled Shaking the Tree, and it was specifically around the whole subject of the killing of Filiberto Fil Rios and the subsequent raids in the Puerto Rican community. And, and what we need to keep in focus here mm -hmm. is that <coughs> this is not something that's happening to the independence movement, mm -hmm. to independentistas, to, to radicals or anything. No, what we need to keep in mind is that this is something that's happening to the Puerto Rican people, mm -hmm. whether it be the diaspora, whether it be the people in, in the island itself. This is happening to the Puerto Rican community as a whole, and this is happening to the Latino community as a whole. And we need to keep a focus of that, and, and, and we need to really dig out from our, from our congressional representatives, from, from, from anyone within the authorities, what is this all about? What, it's, what is behind all of this? Mm -hmm. And that's really important that we're missing that. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't quite get that yet. Yeah, I, I think the key is also the fact that these are like legitimate political groups. These are, you know, participating members of society who pay taxes. You know, we're not talking about radicals. We're talking about regular people who are being called into court as a tactic of repression. So, I mean, in what ways can we really know how these subpoenas are going to affect these movements? What do you feel is the, the intended goal of this? Of the subpoenas or of the response to the subpoenas? I think of the subpoenas themselves. Like, what do you think they're trying to, for this specific, because it's changing. Like I said, it's legitimate, you know, political organizations. It's young people who are professionals. You know, it's not like these are radicals. So what do you feel is the actual intent of doing this? I'm not a legal expert. I'm a poet. You know, <laughs> I, I agree that it's about, you know, um, intimidating people mm -hmm. and creating, um, you know, a culture of fear. Um, that will immobilize and silence people, mm -hmm. you know, in general. And, 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 you know, I agree that it goes beyond, you know, the, the Puerto Rican in independence movement, um, but it concerns the Puerto Rican community and ultimately all Americans. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the political climate that we're in right mm -hmm. now where our civil li liberties are, are being taken away. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that people, um, you know, <laughs> that people are, are conscious and um, that, that that people seek out information as well. So it, I urge people to go to the Center for Puerto Rican Studies um, at Hunter College on 68th Street in Lex um, and read for yourselves um, how historically the Puerto Rican independence movement has been um, persecuted and um, repressed. Um, you mentioned Congressman Serrano a few years ago through the Freedom of Information Act um, got over 40 boxes uh, from the FBI that shows the, 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 the repression um, of the Puerto Rican in independence movement that goes back to um, the 1930s um, until the 80s. And that information is sitting there at Hunter College at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies. Um, I think some of the information is accessible online as well. But it's important for people to just be educated and see the broader historical context. Mm -hmm. And to remember that, um, just like you said before, how we can come out 
the second you know Sunday of uh, of June and wave the flag we also need to come together in times like this to protect our, our rights and, and our civil liberties and be there for our brothers and our mm -hmm. sister okay. and, and in particular if I could just add real quick you know once again we need to bring this back to today to, to, to the context of what's going on today within the Puerto Rican community and its relationship with the United States government there are things here that don't quite make sense that are there are questions here that are not being answered you know I mean if, if this is a hunting of the in the within the independence movement and they're looking to weed out you know people for what end we don't nobody's discussing this stuff nobody's talking about what what is the end you know goal here in these raids and this persecution that's going on here you know I, I ventured out and said you know this is not about you know, looking to make Puerto Rico a state because that's not going to happen. The United States of America at this point and for the foreseeable future, foreseeable future, cannot afford to incorporate the United States as the 51st state. So that's not going to happen. Um, the Commonwealth, that's that's breaking down every day. That's breaking down worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So you know, <laughs> what is the real? What's going on here? Right, so Are they briefly, looking for leaders? I mean, real br briefly, I like to throw out just this idea of you know what possible opportunities do these latest uh, grand jury subpoenas offer? Either activists or people in the Puerto Rican independence movement. Just regular struggles, you know, in terms of broadening community support and building momentum. Where there's where there is repression, there will always be resistance, and this is an opportunity for our entire community to come together. Um, it's an opportunity to educate our young people and to raise consciousness um, and, and awareness in general about um, what it is to be Puerto Rican, what it is to be Boricua. You know, mm -hmm. you're proud to be Boricua. We're all proud to be Boricua, but there's a we have a whole history. Um, of, of being persecuted for whether or not you 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 advocate or or sympathize mm -hmm. with in independence and what's important if I could just follow up real quick with what Mariposa was saying we also have a whole history of being a divided nation mm -hmm. as a people both in the diaspora and in the island and I think if, if you're asking what opportunities could we possibly see in what's going on here and these negative actions that are going on here the opportunity would be for us <coughs> as a nation for the Puerto Rican people as a nation to start envisioning themselves as a nation, mm -hmm. to start looking them at themselves not as 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 as, fa as a as a member of this political party or that political party, but as a Puerto Rican person, no matter where you are. As Correjer said, uh, you know, no importa si naciera en la luna, you know, to soy Puerto Ricano, and and we need to start focusing in 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 in, in that way, in in looking ourselves as Puerto Rican first and foremost before anything else so that anywhere in the world if there's an injustice done on any Puerto Rican, the entire nation needs to mobilize instantly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as soon as we're, we're able to start doing that, that's when things are going to start making sense for us. That's when we're going to start to, to, to create our nation in, you know, in the way it's supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in the kind of freedom that the United States itself is, 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 is looking to defend and promote throughout the world. Right. And that, well, and that in itself doesn't make a lot of sense, so you know. I'd like to thank all of our guests for the wonderful knowledge and insights they shared on these developments. Um, Hector Soto, Bob Boyle, Mariposa, and Rafael Merino Cortez. Thank you. Um, we want to just you. invite our audience uh, to follow up and to be a part of this resistance. Um, for more information, you can contact us. Uh, the email is resistgrandjury at gmail.com. That's resistgrandjury at gmail.com and the phone number that you can contact us is 646-233-2028, 646-233-2028. Again, I'd like to thank our panel members and all of those who watch this program. Uh, hopefully you will stay safe, stay informed, and stay involved. Thank you.
infants Must leave imprints of the militant in each and every sentence Our words are relentless cause our people are the fences So we extend this, hoping we all comprehend this Resistance is something we teach infants Must leave imprints of the militant in each and every sentence Our words are relentless cause our people are the fences So we extend this, hoping we all comprehend this